Hi everyone. Um, today we're going to run through the RT Toy Show appeal. Um, and this uh, video and presentation should really help you as you're applying. Um, so recommend running through it uh, before your application as you're um, as you're doing your application. Um, it'll go through a lot of detail. So uh, I recommend watching it through. You can pause things, look for more detail, things like that. Um, take your time over it because it should help with uh, your proposal itself. So uh, we'll run through a couple of different things. Firstly, um, who the Community Foundation for Ireland is, and then also about the RT Toy Show appeal. Um, looking at much more detail, we'll go through the impact grants round and the community grants round. These are two separate grant rounds that are running at different times in the next couple of months. Um, and we'll go through what they look like. We'll then look at the three thematic strands. So these three strands are the same across both grant rounds. Uh, and we'll look at what kind of impact we're looking to make through these strands and therefore what kind of proposals we're looking for. And then before finishing up, um, we'll look at the application form, how to apply, and then actually what is a strong application and how this will help you um, as you are uh, thinking through your own proposal. So firstly, Community Foundation Ireland. Uh, we're a philanthropic organisation, we're working with our donors, and we're also working with um, a network of charities and community groups who are making change, sometimes at a national level and sometimes at a local level. Our vision is that uh, we have an Ireland where everyone is equal and communities thrive. So we do this, we empower people who want to make a difference through our strategic giving. Um, it's effective and it delivers, and most importantly, it delivers for all. Um, as a philanthropic hub, we offer support, expertise and insights to our donors, one of whom is RTE, but we also deliver for communities and organisations. So where we see there is a need in local communities, we match that with a desire to give from our donors as well. Um, a bit of background. So last year was a, a record breaking year where we made um, 1,200 grants totaling more than 27 million. Um, and this was in Ireland and then also across the globe as well. We have 100 donor advised funds, um, donors who look to give in a strategic way and direct their funding uh, to community groups and to charities to make that change. And since we established in 2000, we've made up 110 million euros worth of grants. So a vast majority of that was actually last year itself. And then one of our largest funds is the RT Toy Show Appeal. Um, so inspired by children, the Toy Show Appeal works to bring the magic of the toy show to every child in Ireland. So this fund is providing essential support, health, well-being supports as well, and then access to play and creativity through the funding it's providing. And ultimately, it's looking to change children's lives for good. This is the third year of the appeal now, so it's been brilliant to work on this over the last couple of years. And as we've been developing the fund, the priorities have been changing to reflect the different uh, environment that we're now in. So whilst there's a whole range of proposals that we, we will accept, you know, some of the priorities for 2023 for the fund is really looking at tackling the cost of living crisis, making sure we're supporting those most affected uh, by the rise in cost of living. Uh, another priority is supporting refugees, whether they're from Ukraine or elsewhere in the world. And then finally, the climate and biodiversity crises that actually, through our grant making, we're making an impact there as well. So the impact grants round. So this is our larger grants round for larger charities. So um, we're inviting children and family charities with an annual income of 500,000 or more to apply for this impact grants round. Um, this income will be checked in your annual account. So just make sure you're aware of which one uh, your annual income is, and then that will direct which grant round you apply for. Within the impact grants round, um, we will be making grants of €25,000 to €75,000. Uh, and this will be for innovative new projects or significantly upscaled programmes that are currently running. And we're looking for impact to be felt at a national and or a local level. So um, we're looking at projects that might be making national change, or it might be making um, real local change that's gonna be really felt in that community level. Within the 25K to 75K, um, we'll look for the budget to show how much you're looking to apply for and actually 
you know, justifying why you're looking for a certain amount of funding as well. So the impact grants round opened last week. So it's currently open for applications at the moment. And it closes for applications on the 10th of February. So that's Friday, the 10th of February at 4 p.m. Uh, really keep that date and time in mind. Um, we find that a lot of people are applying last minute and we really recommend applying at least a couple of days in advance to give yourself a bit of wriggle room. We're then looking for um, outcomes of your applications to be announced towards the end of May. And then projects are looking to start at the start of June. And then mirroring the impact grants round is the community grants round. So through this one, we're welcoming applications again from children and family charities with an annual income of less than 500,000. So similar uh, types of projects we're looking for, but slightly smaller organizations and then slightly smaller grants available as well. And um, so we're looking, we'll be awarding grants between 5,000 euro and 25,000 euro. And it's really looking at the prov provision of essential services. So this can be a new service or it can be a current one that you're looking to continue, uh, particularly in the current environment and current climate. And through the community grants round, we're really looking at the impact at a local level. We're not expecting organizations to be making huge levels of national impact and national change with the size of the grants that are available. So this timeline um, is going is slightly shifted later in the year. So the grant round will open for applications on the 13th of February. So as soon as the impact grants round um, is closed, the community grant round will open on the 13th of Feb. It'll be open for a month and it will close on Friday the 10th of March again at 4 p.m. Um, likewise, the outcomes will be announced at the end of May and then we're looking for projects to start at the beginning of June. So within both of the grant rounds, the same strands apply. So we have three different strands. The first strand is addressing essential needs. So uh, within this strand, funding is going to be granted to ensure that the most vulnerable children are safe, warm and fed and are properly supported in addressing their educational needs. So um, this is particularly important at the moment with the rising cost of living those who are already marginalized are finding themselves much more marginalized. So this strand of funding is really looking to support those children and their families. And then we also recognize the real importance of education and that uh, completing education really, really helps in terms of uh, breaking the cycle of intergenerational poverty. So um, a couple of examples of grants, but this is you know, by no means the only kinds of uh, proposals that we will accept. It's sort of looking at growing services that are providing essential items like food and hygiene and clothes, uh, school books, fuel, things like that. Um, it might be looking at alternative forms of education, uh, you know, programs for children with addi additional needs. Um, for children who struggle with mainstream education, you know, proposals can be um, submitted for alternative forms of educational programs. And then finally, uh, the development of spaces to allow for increased service provision that falls under this strand. So um, if you are developing an education program, but actually the space in which you're hoping to develop this program needs work, you can apply for those sorts of costs within this grant round. We have a couple of other examples included in the criteria. Uh, again, this is just to help you in terms of thinking through the kinds of proposals that we're looking for. If there is an, uh, a proposal that is outside of the list of examples, it doesn't mean that it's not eligible, um, provided it fits within the main um, outcomes and objectives of the strand, then you'll, you'll be absolutely fine. Looking at strand two, um, so improving health and well-being. So grants within this strand of funding uh, will be made to improve the physical and mental health of children and to increase the quality of life for children with disabilities and serious health conditions. Uh, one thing I will say is that when we use the term children, uh, we're talking about um, not to 18 years old. So programs and projects that are working with children and young people not to 18 years old. Um, so examples of this, you know, it might be establishing new and innovative mental health programs. It can also be just sort of upscaling current mental health programs. We understand there's a huge strain on the mental health sector and actually cutting down those waiting lists 
could be one of the most important things that you do as a charity. So that, you know, that kind of work would definitely fit into this strat. It might be the development of essential services for children with disabilities. And then again, the development of spaces to allow for this increased service provision. So if you're looking to increase the number of mental health programs that you're running, but you don't have the space to do so, this strand, you, you can apply to develop the space to allow for an increase in the number of programs and services that you are providing. Again, there's much more in the criteria, so definitely take a look there. That will get you thinking about the kinds of things that are eligible uh, for you to apply for. And then finally, in strand three, creativity and play. So grants within this strand were made to ensure that the most marginalised and disadvantaged children have access to the arts and then also have access to play and extracurricular activities. So examples here might include uh, growing outreach programmes to engage marginalised cohorts within the arts as a whole. Uh, it might be to uh, start creative programmes that support children with additional needs. And then again, development of spaces that allow for increased access to uh, play, creativity and socialising, uh, whether this is an indoor space or an outdoor space as well. So across both, all of three of those strands, um, one thing I'll say is that whilst there are three strands, charities can only apply for one of the three strands. So have a think about your proposal, think about which strand it might fit in most suitably. We are only accepting one proposal per organisation, no matter which strand it is that you're applying for. So across both the impact and the community grants round, but also all three strands, um, there are some things which are sort of our baseline eligibility criteria. So the projects that you're applying for must uh, benefit, must support and work with the most vulnerable and marginalised children. So uh, children who are socially and economically disadvantaged children with disabilities or severe long-term illnesses, those who suffered trauma or grief, and children who are suffering with behaviour or psychological difficulties, and then children who are facing discrimination. So it's quite broad here, but we do ask that um, the work that you're doing does support these particular types of children. And then in terms of the kinds of um, organisations that are eligible, so we are only accepting applications from uh, registered charities. So you must have an eight digit charity number and you will be asked for this um, in your application. If you don't have a charity number, if you're in the process of applying, you're not eligible for this grant round. Um, but if you are looking to apply for uh, other funding, you know, you're welcome to email us at info at foundation.ie and you'll be able to see sort of other funding that might be available to you. And then again, we're looking for charities that work regularly with children and young people. So charities that don't usually work with children and young people, but are looking to break into that space. And um, that kind of work is not what we're looking for at the moment. What we're looking for is established children and family focused charities that are regularly working in this space, have a really good track record and history of working with children and young people and are looking to start a new service or to grow their current services. And then finally, across the board, all funding must be spent by the end of June 2024. So if you're starting a new project, uh, we're looking for it to start in June 23 and then to be completed by June 24. Um, or if you are continuing or growing a current project, the budgets and the funding that you're applying for that's dedicated to that continuation or growth must be spent by June 2024. In both cases, if you're looking to continue the project beyond that date, that's absolutely fine. But we just ask that the Toy Show Appeal funding is specifically spent down by that date and um, so that you can then report back to us in July of 2024 on the impact of the work. And then on the flip side, um, the ineligible applications. So in terms of projects, uh, we're not looking for generic ongoing core costs and it can include insurance, rent and bills. Um, where there are core costs specifically related to the project itself, so for example, salaries, um, that can be included given that it's such an, an essential element of the project, but ongoing core costs, unfortunately, aren't included in this grant round. Ineligible projects also include advocacy work, um, large scale building work or procurement. So the small scale development of spaces is okay, but where we're looking at large scale 
uh, building work that would be eligible, and I'll go into this a bit later. Vehicle costs, um, religious or political activities, projects that have already happened or activities that will happen and be completed before the grants are awarded, and then projects taking, out, taking place outside of the Republic of Ireland are also ineligible. And then ineligible organisations include community groups or companies without that charity registration number, schools and private childcare facilities, sports organisations, uh, profit-making companies, animal welfare organisations, and then proposals from individuals themselves. So looking at slightly more detail on the staff, the equipment and the capital costs. So as I said before, the staff time specifically related to a project is eligible. And this includes projects that, you know, you're looking to employ a new member of staff because you're upscaling um, the piece of work that you're doing or um, salaries that are increased hours or days for that member of staff. And um, if you're looking to increase the work there. Staff time that is not related to the project isn't eligible. Equipment costs are eligible, so where it's specifically related to the strand and the criteria. So we'll just need to see that. Um, so if you're looking to buy additional equipment or medical supplies, we just need to see that that is um, eligible and fits within the criteria. Um, small capital costs are eligible. So this might include room refurbishment, renovation or extensions. But what we're looking at is that the toy show funding that you've applied for must cover at least 75% of the total capital costs. So if you have, if you're looking to do renovations and it's, the total cost is 100,000, then we are looking that uh, the toy show funding will cover 75,000 of that 100,000 so that we know that by providing you funding, you are almost 100% of the way there to completing that piece of work. Um, if you have a much, much larger project um, and the toy show funding will just be a small contribution to that overall project, that isn't eligible. Um, and we'll need to see this outlined in the budget that actually what you're applying for is 75% of the total costs that you're after. And then contributions to buy a new building or buy new land aren't eligible. So um, within our uh, three strands, they're all quite broad. A lot of different proposals can fit in with that. So we also have priorities. Um, now, if, you, if your project doesn't necessarily hit one or more of these priorities, it's not that you're ineligible and it's not um, that you're not going to receive the funding. But what we do find is in the toy show um, grant rounds that we run is that we are very oversubscribed. So in order to um, determine how which organisations and which projects to fund and which not to, we have set out priorities. Um, this is all in the criteria. So um, right from the start, we're showing you where we're looking to put funding or where we're looking to prioritise our funding. And so just have a think, can your project or proposal fit any of these priorities? Um, so I'll just run through these quickly, but feel free to pause here and just have a, have a look through. So projects that are strongly justified and then the need for the project is based and grounded in research and evidence. Projects and programmes that are innovative and strategic. Uh, projects that are centred around prevention and early intervention. Um, projects that are directly responding to the cost of living crisis and an increase in refugees from Ukraine and elsewhere in the world one of the priorities that I highlighted earlier. Uh, projects that respond to the climate and biodiversity crisis, and this could be through research, education, awareness, or practical response. Again, mentioned this one earlier. Projects that have an impact on the wider community or sector. And this might be through collaboration, evaluation, sharing learnings, things like that. Projects that have the potential to be sustained beyond the life of this grant. And then projects that include the voice and feedback of beneficiaries in the development of the programme itself. If you have any questions or queries on this, I recommend getting in touch with us. Um, you can just send us a quick email at info at foundation.ie and we'll happily run through it with you so you can check that your project uh, aligns with any of these priorities. So looking at how to apply. Um, so we want to bring you this section so that as you're going through the criteria, and as you are writing your application, you have all the information uh, available to help you write your best uh, proposal. 
uh, just a caveat, if you watch this video, if you sort of follow all the steps, no guarantee of the funding. Um, often we are just very oversubscribed and in every case, not every organization is gonna be able to be funded, but this should help you in write uh, the best application that you can to access the funding. So in five simple steps, um, read the criteria documents carefully, uh, plan your proposal carefully. Um, number three, read the question carefully. This is probably the most important one of all, all of them. Then gather your governance documents and then submit your proposal well ahead of the deadline. So looking at our application form, um, all of the applications that um, we receive must come in through this application form. It looks like this. There'll be a number of different questions for you to put in your information. Um, some of them are short answers and some of them are longer answers. But this is sort of what you'll be faced with as you uh, apply for funding. So a couple of things to point out on the screen here um, is that on the right hand side, you have uh, a list of all the different sections of the application form. So right now we're in section one, um, but it will go through the applicant details through to the project and the budget details and then the governing documents that we're looking for you to submit as well. The save application section, um, just gonna highlight this at this stage. You can save your application as you go along um, before you submit it in full, but please make sure that you're saving if you're leaving the page and then coming back to it. Um, we'd also recommend that only one person works on this application form at a time. So as you, uh, as you apply, you'll be sent a unique link to access your own application form. Um, we just recommend that one person works on this at a time rather than um, multiple people because sometimes it doesn't save properly. And then looking at the main body of the application form. So any um, field that has a red line down the side, that is uh, an essential field. So uh, this is information that if you don't fill it in, the form will automatically flag it up um, if, you, if you don't fill it in and try to submit. Um, make sure that when you do hit submit, you just double check that you haven't had anything flag up. We have some people that hit submit, don't realize that they have fields that haven't been filled in and then never realize that they haven't actually applied for the grant round. So make sure you double check that. Um, also, just to sort of highlight the information, the I symbol here, I'll show you what this looks like, um, but I'd really recommend that as you go through each of the different questions, you hover over that I, uh, the little information I button, and that will provide you additional information uh, in terms of helping you uh, draft your answer to the question itself. So what does it look like to make a strong application? So here is uh, one of the first questions that we asked. Uh, what are the charitable aims and objectives of your organization as defined in your constitution? And then what are the day-to-day -day activities of your organization? So there's two different elements to this and we've highlighted that in the information one. So by hovering over that eye, this little text box pops up. We're really looking for you to answer both questions. Um, if you only answer one or one of the two elements of the question, you know, you're not gonna be scoring full marks on that. So please answer both questions. And then only charities that focus their work on children and families are eligible in this grant round. So just reminding you of some of the criteria there. This helps you sort of to focus your question and the way that you're, you're answering it. Um, so in the answer here, you know, they're saying that they're working with children um, in financial hardship, but then they're also supporting the families in long term as well. Um, you can pause here, have a read through, um, see how they've, um, they've set up their answer. You know, what we're looking at here is someone who's, they've only used sort of 140 words um, of the words that they have available. So, um, you know, you don't ever have to use your entire word count. It's more of a guide. Um, but we do need to make sure that you're putting enough detail in it. Um, so by answering both elements to the question, you'll probably end up using most of the words available. But even in this one, you know, they've, they've kept their answers quite short and snappy but they have made sure to include both, you know, what the objectives of their organization are and then also what their day-to-day -day activity includes as well. Um, this question here, um, we've sort of outlined and reminded you of what the, the aim of the strand is. 
So the strand aims to improve the living conditions and educational outcomes of children at risk. So that's the headline. And then we're saying, please describe your project or program and how it meets the objectives of this strand of toy show appeal. And um, so this is coming from our uh, addressing essential needs strand. Um, so what we want you to do here is really to show us, you know, what your project is, but then also show us how it fits the criteria. It makes our assessors' lives really simple when you are really clear in your answers that actually your project fits the criteria really neatly. So they spent the first paragraph outlining uh, the program that they're wanting to do. And then actually with the funding, they can uh, split the homework clubs, they can do additional homework clubs and have additional children there. And then that final paragraph, they showed us how it fits with the Toy Show Appeal um, aims and objectives. So that they're, uh, they're working with children from a particularly disadvantaged area by increasing the number of disadvantaged children accessing these supports. And then they'll support them whilst they're at school and increase the participation. So that helps in terms of um, accessing employment and having the best chance of life later on in their lives. Uh, so they've really linked it back to the aims and objectives of what the addressing essential needs strand is looking to do. Um, so you know you can do that as you're doing your own proposal, whether you know it's the addressing essential needs or one of the other other uh, one of the other strands. But you're saying this is exactly how it fits, and that just makes it really clear for our assessors as they're going through and reading your applications. Just giving another example of a question here. So this is a question about the need for the proposal. Um, just thinking back to the priorities, one of the priorities uh, for the Toy Show Appeal is that the need for the programmes are based in uh, evidence and research. So in this answer, the charity has made sure that they're linking it back uh, to the research that they have access to. Um, you know, res uh, research that Pobble has done is publicly available um, they have that they have access to that data, um, but they also have anecdotal evidence as well. So they've they've referenced the forty percent of the data, uh, but they're also um, showing that they have anecdotal uh, evidence as well. They've rounded off their answer with a really short but succinct uh, reminder and conclusion for why they need this project. So they've made it really clear. And then they've just reminded us at the end that um, you don't have to structure your answers in the exact way that's here. This is very much just an example, but we just want to show you that this is the kind of answers that we're seeing. So um, it'll help you in terms of planning your own proposal as well. And then just looking at the budget quickly. Um, so we're looking for projects to be 12 months long or to finish by June 2024. Um, so we're only looking for you to be doing sort of filling in the year one column. Even if your project runs for multiple years and you're going to search for funding, you know, for year two and year three in some other way, we're only really interested in year one, uh, particularly for this sort of budget element. Uh, but we are looking for detail. So in the example here, they've broken it up into the staff hours, the setup costs, uh, the program costs of the actual homework club itself. And then they're providing hot meals as well. So they've broken that down and then they've also given additional information. So even on the staff hours, they're looking at additional staff hours, um, 10 you know, additional hours per week. Um, and then they're also thinking about PSRI and other costs related to the employment of that particular staff. They've added additional detail when it comes to the setup costs, the program costs and the hot meals. Um, it's important to you know, include this level of detail, we do want to see it. Um, so just make sure it's there. And then as you're going through, it totals up automatically. So you can double check that the amount that you're looking for is sort of matching what you've actually put in your budget um, as, you, as you're submitting it. Again, you know, all of the different budgets that we receive will look slightly different, but taking this as an example, it should help you structure your own budget um, to make sure you are including enough detail um, and making sure that we can really understand how the funding that you're looking for is going to be broken down. So uh, to summarise with tips and tricks for your application, 
Um, so make sure you answer all parts of a question. So there might be multiple questions rolled into one or multiple elements for you to sort of focus on. Make sure you're using the eye icon and you're hovering over that for additional information. There is a lot of additional support within these um, information icons, so make sure you use it. And then show us how your project fits the criteria and show us the real unique value of your project. That's what we're looking to see is that the most valuable and the most impactful projects are the ones that we're, being, that we're funding. Um, so show us that throughout your application. Make sure your budget is clear and detailed. And then probably the most important thing, save as you go. You, know, you can come back to this over multiple days or multiple weeks, but just make sure you save as a draft each time you exit out of the, uh, the web page. And then we really recommend that you submit well ahead of time. If anything does go wrong at the last minute, um, you know, it's unlikely, but it sometimes does happen. So just make sure that you have uh, loads of time available um, to follow up with us or to ask for additional support. At that time. So um, that was a real sort of whistle stop tour of uh, how to apply for the Toy Show Appeal. Um, so we wish you the best of luck with it. Um, but please do give us an email if you do have any questions about the criteria, the FAQs, the application form. Uh, we're happy to chat with you um, and, you know, best of luck in terms of submitting your proposals.